Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Canada's federal court upholds compensation order for indigenous children. All charges dropped against three leaders of South Africa's Abhalali Basse Majindolo. Death toll climbs in worst prison massacre in Ecuador. And hundreds protest suspension of Beirut blast inquiry in Lebanon. In our first story, Canada's federal court has upheld a landmark compensation order for indigenous children. The order was issued by a human rights tribunal in 2016 in retaliation to the welfare system. It found that the government allocated less funds for public services for indigenous peoples. The discrimination pushed more children from these communities into the foster system. Despite forming only 7.7% of Canada's population, indigenous children form 52% of the foster system. The tribunal ordered the government to give indigenous children affected by the system a compensation of $40,000 each. The children's parents and grandparents would also be eligible for compensation, except in cases such as abuse. The government of Justin Trudeau asked for a judicial review and a stay on the decision in 2019. The application was dismissed by Justice Paul Favell on September 29th. The ruling was issued a day before Canada said to observe its first national day of truth and reconciliation. It aims to honour over 150,000 Indigenous children who were victims of the so-called residential schools. The abuse and torture carried out in the schools is considered a cultural genocide. Friday will also mark Orange Shirt Day, where people wear the colour to honour victims and survivors. Cultural sur events have been organised in various areas, including a Remember Me walk to Parliament Hill. In our next story, all charges have been dropped against three leaders of South Africa's Shack Dwellers Movement or Abhalali Basse Majandolo. Linda Hule Nguni, Lando Shadzi and Ayanda Ngila were released on September 29th. They were detained for six months at Westville Prison, facing charges for the murder of Wuzi Shezi. ABM stated that their arrest was part of a crackdown on the movement's Ekhanana occupation. It is operating as a working commune with a cooperative farm and a political school. ABM has also said that the two witnesses in the case made sworn statements, stating that they had lied. The autopsy report also contradicted the original witness statements. One of the witnesses was part of a local family affiliated with the African National Congress. The movement has stated that the ANC has been trying to seize the community's land to turn it for profit private property. ABM held a meeting to discuss the facts of the case on March 21st. However, soon after, leaders George Bonono, Mafifi Gasala and Siniko Mia were arrested. They were charged with conspiracy to murder, despite the fact that Mia was not even present at the meeting. Their trial is expected to take place in Durban on October 1st. We now go to Ecuador, where at least 116 people have been killed in what is being called the worst prison violence in the country's history. Fighting broke out between rival gangs in the littoral prison in the city of Guayaquil. At least 80 other people have been injured. Authorities have stated that the fighting took place using firearms, explosives and knives. President Guillermo Lasso has declared a state of emergency in the prison system for 60 days. Police, military and national service for comprehensive attention to persons deprived of liberty and adolescent offenders have been mobilized. The massacre in Guayaquil took place two months after 27 people were killed in the same prison. 79 prisoners were also killed in February during simultaneous riots in three prisons. An expert told AFP that Ecuador has been witnessing a steady rise in prison killings since 2017. The system is also facing structural problems including overcrowding and corruption. 39,000 people are currently imprisoned while the system has a capacity of just 30,000. The former Lenin Moreno administration was also heavily criticised in February for failing to guarantee the right to life and the security of incarcerated people. And finally, families of the 2020 Beirut blast victims held renewed protests in the capital on September 29th. These followed the suspension of an inquiry into the explosion which killed at least 218 people. Former Interior Minister Nawhad Majnook filed a complaint against the investigating Judge Tariq Pitar. Majnook has been accused of criminal negligence in the blast. He accused Judge Pitar of bias and misconduct and requested his removal from the case. The Court of Cessation will now decide whether to accept or reject the case. Around 300 people gathered outside the Palace of Justice on Wednesday to protest the action. A similar complaint had led to the dismissal of Bitar's predecessor, Judge Fadi Sawan. Bitar has charged several top officials with criminal negligence, including former Prime Minister Hassan Diab. All leaders have denied wrongdoing. Before the inquiry was suspended, Bitar had filed summons requests for senior security officials. Among them was Major General Abbas Ibrahim and Major General Tony Saliba. The judicial probe into the 2020 blast has not yielded any results so far. Victims' families have repeatedly accused top political and military leaders of obstructing the proceedings. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.